Hello, thank you for watching. In this video, you're going to learn two techniques, wet on wet and glazing. The goal of both of these techniques is to leave no brush strokes behind. I'm going to start by going over the underpainting in the background with acrylic that has been slightly thinned with water. When I get to the edge of the circle and the line that divides the table from the background, I'm going to slow down and add even more water to the paint. This will help me to sharply define the edges in the painting. Now I'm going to paint the core shadow, which is the darkest part of the form shadow. Add water to the paint, but not too much. You don't want puddles in the middle of your painting. Be sure to use a smaller brush when you paint the details of the sphere. And of course, you need to slow down when you get to the edge of the sphere. Now I'm going to paint the terminator, which is the blurry border between the shadow and the light. I made this color by mixing white and blue to the color that made the core shadow. While the terminator and the core shadow are still wet, I used a small brush to blend those two colors together where they meet. After I've used the wet on wet technique to transition the core shadow into the terminator, I'm going to mix the halftones. The halftone color is made by mixing white to the color used to make the terminator. The halftones are the parts of the sphere that are being hit indirectly by the light. Use a small brush to blend the halftones into the terminator where they meet while they are still wet. Notice how I'm blending all of the brush strokes together so that the individual brush strokes disappear and the shadow seamlessly blends into the light. Next, I'm going to mix white with the halftone color to make this center light color. The center light is the part of the sphere that is being hit most directly by the light source. After I apply the center light color, I'm going to blend it into the halftones while the two colors are still wet. I'm going to continue to blend these colors until they fade into each other. When I'm done with the center light, I'm going to move on to the reflected light at the bottom of the sphere. The reflected light is created when light bounces off the table onto the sphere. The reflected light is directly underneath the core shadow. The reflected light is slightly darker than the color of the table. Blend the reflected light into the core shadow where they meet. When I'm done with the reflected light, I'm going to touch up the sphere. I just need to darken the deepest part of the core shadow. Next, I'm going to use a dark blue-gray to paint the cast shadow. The edge between the cast shadow and the sphere should be sharply defined, but the outer edge of the cast shadow should be blurry. To create this blurry edge, remix the table color and paint it around the edge of the cast shadow then blend these two colors together. Take your time. The technique that we're using to paint this sphere is the most time consuming of all the techniques that I'm going to teach you. Now I'm going to glaze the sphere. This will cover up any apparent brush strokes and allow the different parts of light and shadow to transition even more smoothly. Dilute the paint with a lot of water in order to create glazes. Apply only a little bit of this paint and water to your brush at a time so that the paint doesn't drip down your canvas. Alright, that's it. Thank you for watching.